Welcome to Face to Facts. We hope everybody is doing well. Uh, happy 2021. I think this is our second show that we've done with the new year and everything going on, but we hope you're staying healthy and well, and hopefully there are better days to come. Um, I want to kick off this show by talking a little bit about the playoff structure here in the NFL on how things look and what we're expecting. I want to talk about the Bruins who will be opening up their season this upcoming week here. Um, and then I also want to uh, talk about the Celtics with their COVID uh, issues and um, the trade where James Harden just went to the Brooklyn Nets. So that's all loaded up here on this episode of Face Facts. If we get a chance to, we'll talk a little bit about baseball too. Um, because there is a little bit of news with the Red Sox with some potential trades, some potential signings. So we'll get all that covered in this show. I want to start though first, let's talk about uh, the Bruins as their season will be starting uh, January 14th. Um, so depending on when you are watching this program, you get a chance to watch the Bruins take on uh, their opening night, uh, which will be January 14th, Thursday night. Um, I, I know for one, uh, I am hopeful that the team will look um, okay, but the issue that I still see is leadership. You know, Chara is now a capital. Granted, we don't think, I guess, after talking on our last show that he's gonna have significant minutes and all. Um, it's still a loss on the team. So someone's gonna definitely step in and fill that void left by Chara. And then we'll also Patrice Bergeron is your, uh, that is your new captain. So I think everybody is in full agreement that that was the right decision to make. So Tom, I'm going to lead it off over to you. I want just a little bit of uh, an overview on what you think will occur here with the Bruins early on. What's your expectation and things to look for? Uh, well, you know, first of all, I thought we were going to go to Phil first because I know Phil's really looking forward to the NHL season for the Bruins starting up this year. Yeah, um, I mean, I threw my party last night. It had okay. under the... But I mean, I'll it was sure a spreader. Charlie Baker, and I'll make yeah, sure... I, well, squad it wasn't in. a super spreader, but it was up there. It got there. Oh, good. Excellent. Yeah. Love to hear. Oh, five people. <laughs> yeah. Well, no one showed up, but I threw it. I threw it, but no one showed up. I'm not uh, popular. I'll be honest. Oh, oh, well. You tried. You tried. All I got to say is I I'm ready. I don't know if you can see that. I got my Bruins socks on, got, got my Bruins hat on. Uh, this original six sweatshirt with the Bruins here, and I uh, got, got the Bruins shirt on underneath. So I'm ready to go. Um, should be. I'm hope I'm hoping that it's a um, fairly easy matchup for them tonight. But I mean, who knows? They haven't well, played. You let the cat months. out of the bag. Now they know when we're going. Now we're recording this program. So yeah, it's a opening mean, night 14th, here for the Bruins. Sorry. Yes. Sorry, January fourteenth, and I January 4th, Phil will cut it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll work for Phil. This is all. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. This will all be in. I'll actually add more of you explaining. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had clips for me from other shows and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> just what the audience wants to see more of you. <laughs> Lovely. Um, Got, yeah, shots no, are January, January, <laughs> January January fourteenth. Um, they're playing the Devils. It should. I, I'm expecting a fairly easy, uh, fairly easy matchup. But I mean, who knows? New season. I mean, everybody thought everybody thought the the Leafs were going to have an easy time against the Canadians on opening night, and they barely beat them in overtime. So. Um, leadership core, I like it. I like it a lot. I mean, the past few seasons, you've seen that they were alternating um, home games and away games with Krejci and Marshawn having the A on their chest, and now they don't really have to worry about that right now um, anymore because Bergeron's the captain now. Char is gone. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I'm looking forward to watching – Tuka Rask bounces back after all the criticism. He left, obviously, we know of the bubble from family circumstances and all. How does he bounce back in a contract year? I, I think he's going to have a great year, to be honest. Um, I, I think he – I mean, I know a lot of people were, you know uh, – I think a talking. lot of people are still super critical of him. I mean, I, I was a little bit too. Uh, the timing, the timing wasn't great, but the reasoning, the reasoning is what you know keeps me supporting him, um, if it's true, uh, which I think it is. I mean, why would why would you lie about a 
family, a family, family circum, a, a family yeah. situation. I I would sense the same. I haven't heard any rumblings about anything other than a family situation. I heard some things. I believe he was out in the golf course. He was doing this, doing that. But even if he was, that doesn't mean that he's not still caring for his family and all that kind of stuff too. Right, and I and I think for a guy like Tuca, I mean, to leave to leave the bubble during the playoffs. And to be, be at home with his family, I, you know, every, everybody needs to get out and do something, especially, you know, especially athletes. Athletes can't just sit around and do absolutely nothing. So, I mean, if you saw him out on the golf course, then you saw him out on the golf course. Right. Yeah. It's his personal um, life. It's, it's whatever his prerogative. He right. It, it's, it's his life. It's, we, we, we can't, you know, I mean, we can be critical. We're, we're all critical of athletes. Life. You just but, can't. You just can't. Yeah. It's just, but I, I I see big things from him. I think he's looking forward to get back, getting back on the ice. Um, I do know that they have been uh, keeping him and Halak separated as much I as possible. Hear that. Yep. Um, I heard that. So that Same way, um, so for anybody that's wondering why, it's not because you know Halak and Rask are having fights over who's going to be the starting goaltender. It's because they, um, be. they don't want the goalies. <laughs> They don't want the goalies to, you know, both contract COVID nineteen in the same uh, at the same time and lose both. Then they might goalies. have to actually go over to Tim Thomas's bunker and ask him to step in and. and oh, I hope not. Can. Or maybe hope Andrew not. Raycroft because he is the he is a broadcaster now for the Bruins. I take I take. They Raycroft. might have to tell him come up from the ninth deck and go down and put your yeah. skates on. Put I take I on. take Razor back on the ice. I think he'd do a I, good I job. I always like him. Um, Young guys, so including myself, of course, um, I wanted to ask if there's anyone in particular who coming up from Providence will be filling slots now onto this roster, you know, could be someone that, that's filling in for Achara or Krug. Remember, Krug and Chara were parts of a very solid defensive core for the Bruins here. So Tory Krug, I think, is much more valuable and going to be missed much more than Chara because he was on that power play, good majority of the time. So your minutes that Krug was ha having, who takes those minutes? It's going to be tough because Krug had big minutes. He was also part of the – he was a big part of the power play core too. So um, that, that's going to be a tough spot to fill. So PBA, um, to be determined on that. Yeah, um, I, I can't I – don't, I don't really know who – they, you know, they were, I, I think they saw, I think, I also think they saw Krug uh, leaving the roster because if you, you know, they were throwing, they were rotating some guys in and out of the power play throughout the postseason last season and um, correct towards the start of the playoffs. Trying last to season prepare too. themselves for life. Yeah. Without Krug. Yeah. Makes so sense. Um, I think uh, possibly Clifford, I think he might be, he might be a good a big red dog. No, 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 Connor oh, Clifford. Oh, Connor. Oh. I, I think. Right there. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got excited. Oh, put him, put him in well, net. <laughs> he'd be dominant. He'd be dominant, but I mean, there'd be a lot of fatalities. But oh. put, put him in net. You, I, you I, as far solid. as I remember, Clifford was a very nice dog. So I don't know in the face. Oh no, I, I don't think. I don't he think might he be would too generous and let too many pucks through the five hole. No, I'm just saying, just logistically, <laughs> he will be squishing a lot of players. A lot of people will get like, you can't. Good. There's not Good. a well. All right. He's just a big red dog. What are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah, get your bone and go shove it. Uh, back to the dog house for him. Um, I think I want to see more of um, Jack. Is it, it's Jack Stadnicka? Stadnicka, yeah. He's, well, he's... I think that he could be an X factor here. I'm not saying it's star level or a posture now kind of level, but I think his upside can be even more or even bigger than what DeBrus did when DeBrus first came up. I, I, I think that's out on a limb there, but I like I like what I see from his skill set from some of the some games I saw from Providence, but also some of the smarts that I saw from him when he transitioned up here into the NHL. I think his game fits the NHL well. It's just finding what line he's going to slide into. I, 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 Iowa Cassidy. I think he's going to be on the third line. I don't Most, know. I mean, 
I would say first or second, um, unless they decide to do what they did last year and have Pasenak on the second line, they might. I mean, it all depends on, you know, what he does. I don't know if they'd move him up to the first line, but, um, I mean, it's always a possibility. It all depends on what you do. I don't want to see that first line of Marshan, Bergeron, and Costa broken up much this year. I, I got to say, I, I, I like – that is the – that has always been one of the best, if not the best, first line in hockey. No, I, I know it's very, it's very, it kind of, it kind of impacts your depth. But I do think that it's a separator to other teams. I think, yeah, I mean, it, it's tough for teams to defend that line. But at the same time, I also think. Um, I mean, the second line did some great things when Pasternak was on that line with Krejci. But well, he... that's the other thing I was going to mention is Poster and Krejci together really clicked. Because Krejci, out of all those guys, you know, Bergeron, Marchand, Pasta, Krejci had the best playoff this past year. Yeah. And um, it, it's, I, it just, it's a matter of what if they can find someone to – um, pair up well with Marshawn and Bergeron that if they if they end up doing that. But I do I do like seeing Pass on that second line sometimes. So overall, Tom, you're you like the direction where this team is headed. It's just we got to watch and see what happens. Is that my is that how you're kind of determining this year? Yeah, I mean we'll have to see how the first game goes against New Jersey. Um, I'm looking forward to watching a lot of the young guys. Okay. Uh, keep an eye on Craig Smith too, the newest addition to the team. Of course, we'll somebody with does. the last name Smith. I mean, of course. Yeah, yeah, got it. Um, I mean, we'll have to we'll have to see how he does, what his impact is. Is he on the, on the second line? Um, maybe to start. I mean, with how DeBrus performed last year, you, you know, you might see him on the. You might see DeBrus move down in the lineup. Um, but with the with the injuries and stuff too, you know, you, you know, who knows what's going to happen what's going to get the mashup. But I think once they're, I think once they're healthy, I think we'll see. Um, I think we'll see maybe, maybe Bjork on that second line. Uh, could be DeBrus, could be Smith. It all depends on uh, how they perform and what they, how they produce. Okay. So I'll stay optimistic on Tom's front. I want to watch and see what happens. I hope it's going to be a good year. And by meaning a good year, it's, it's Stanley Cup or bust. I mean, you got to do it here. I mean, the window's closing. You, it's put the pedal to the metal and make it happen. So let's see what happens on on that front. Um, I want to move back over to Phil now. I know Phil's been quite silent outside of Clifford. So let's talk about the. I just been. Celtics. Tom said everything I needed to say. Tom did. Oh come on. on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Even I, I, put, even I make an input on basketball. Phil, come on now. <laughs> listen, if you want my you want my real input, read uh, my diary. It's not online. I will photocopy and send you a copy. Just uh, follow the emails that you see at the uh, end of the show. Excellent. Uh, so, Phil, give me the dirty on the Celtics. And the dirty means I... I feel, yeah, just Speaking a doggy. Um, tell Clifford. Doggy going too. after a kid. Um, what, what is going on in the world of the Celtics? I know that we are in a cancel game phase right now. Mm-hmm. We uh, they've canceled actually three games in the past week. They've had I think up to four or five, maybe even six players uh, under um, uh, pretty much. No, I don't want to use the word suspended, but under like the health protocol because of COVID. Yep. And they look to, uh, they look to play tomorrow night. And originally Kemba was supposed to start the season tomorrow night. We'll see what happens, but it's looking like they will play tomorrow night against the Magic at seven thirty p.m. But, and it uh, looks like they're going to still be without Tatum for a significant amount of time. Uh, possibly. It could be until right. maybe this weekend, at the end of the weekend, or until at least until the Philadelphia 76ers series, I think. They are and, keeping it very kind of lock and key, where I don't think bit, we yeah. know who has COVID and who doesn't. I think that there was a potential exposure somewhere and I know that they're trying to keep things as safe and clean as they can. But part of the protocols here with the NBA is that they aren't even canceling games. It's just that you have to have the next person up kind of fill in. 
I don't like that at all. Well, they actually, actually, actually they, they've actually canceled quite a few games. I mean, not just the Celtics, but with, because uh, I, the Celtics I, and the Heat. It's a completely heat. different Celtics team if you take out a Tatum or if you take out a Brown or Smart yeah, or whatever the heck. Well, they're, they're, they're doing them a favor. Yeah, they're doing them a favor by, I mean, technically, you need eight players. And I think they might have had eight players. They had eight players at Miami game, but Miami didn't. That was the thing, too. Actually, how it began, because Miami played the Celtics. It was actually Celtics. good that Miami, Miami kind of saved us on that. A little bit. Well, I mean, they didn't have enough players either, so that was kind of on them. I guess it was like Avery Bradley was uh, apparently patient zero, according uh, to some reports. And yeah. uh, it just, you know, like how the virus has spread everywhere else, it, you know, they were playing each other and be it on the court or – just around um, like Do afterwards. Do you think this whole thing could have been avoided if they had some sort of a bubble? Yeah, of course. I, I, I think in stark contrast to how they had the playoffs, which is a whole different scenario. I mean, yeah, if you had a bubble, you probably, it would be a lot different. Uh, I don't, I don't know if they're willing to do it. Cause I think, I don't know. I guess I think they want to try to employ Maybe other, uh, maybe owners want to employ some of their people again and get stuff going again. But it was just, and maybe they just didn't have the infrastructure again to do it for, you know, almost a whole season. Because who knows how long. I think a lot of players fought back. I think a lot of players said no, they weren't. Oh, you know, that that's a good point too. I think you're right. And I, I know Kyrie Irving is one who, you know, not to jump Here the gun we on go. anything. But I know Here he sat out a couple go. things. You had to say his name. Well, I mean, oh. he's one of the famous guys who's uh, who said, famous. you know, and it has been, well, he's been infamous uh, gentlemen who, who've come out and, you know, and I don't disagree with some of what he's saying as far as like being, a, be put themselves out on the floor in this and putting them, endangering themselves a little bit, uh, which I have to verify if that's exactly what he was referring to. But I know he also, you know, he's Kyrie Irving. He says he talks out of both sides. And who knows where the wind blows with him, as uh, Chris name, Jasper man. would say. Oh, go for it. Man, I think it, I think it would have been tough the to have The turd master. The turd master? I mean, if he can control <laughs> turds, I mean, that's quite a power. I mean, I think, it, I think it would have been tough to have a bubble for, like Phil said, a complete season. Then you have to yeah. think about it. You have, then you would have to do it for the playoffs, too. And I don't think, I don't think anybody would want to do that. No, and as that, as Nick pointed out, I wasn't even necessarily thinking about it. Uh, yeah, the, I'm sure the players were like, "No, we're not doing it this time." This play, I mean, that was a. I think people feel like they will be able to resume a bit of normalcy with the NBA season at the end of the road, maybe like April or May. Well, isn't it? Isn't it true that all the um, professional athletes, basically, you know, basketball, NHL, they've all been given the vaccine. I actually don't know that. I, I don't know I, that's true. Um, not, yeah. don't know I, I, I don't know. I don't think they're on that. I don't know where they are on that uh, in the phase calendar. Well, and I, that's I the thing, too. You one thing that I have done since 2021, um, I am not using social media as much. Um, oh, good. Not that I deleted it, but it's off my phone to use. So my Twitter, which I've used significantly and talked about it oh we know yeah nauseum on the show <laughs> yeah. i'm not doing it my my i'm really only just kind of instagramming through company kind of stuff and yeah, yeah. it's a lot less stressful i have to say <laughs> it makes well, your life happier it makes yeah. your day more peaceful i highly recommend it folks no, Get that's away from a it. pretty sage-like advice because it's i don't it, it's kind of like a weight that you carry um with you when you you play around with it yeah, uh, yeah. I, I i will say that it's a breath of fresh air doing things that aren't electronically like addicting in a way it's kind of like sure. giving up coffee if you're yeah. a coffee you know, <coughs> caffeine addict or something it's push it away Quick. especially since so many people block you on twitter anyway <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be talking the most yeah uh, you're down to eight followers now, and we'll see what. Probably happens. knowing how Twitter operates and everything now. So no, he got banned from Twitter. I'm that's actually a, that's surprised what, that's I wasn't banned or yeah, that, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, go, was this your it, resolution or was this Twitter's resolution? No, I just <laughs> didn't. Not, oh, I just, did, I just yeah. had enough of it. Uh, no, they uh, banned you. We we know you're covering <laughs> up. They banned you. <laughs> uh, we get we get it. Um, no, that's no, but that honestly, I think that's actually a very healthy thing to do. Uh, I was actually talking to a friend of mine about how uh, possibly we might not have 
uh, caught up um, like in our own heads or psychologically caught up to being constantly incommunicado with everybody like uh, I, in, in areas of the world. But you know what? It, it's a tool just like anything else. Uh, but regardless of that, yeah, like the, back to the bubble stuff. I mean, this kind of bleeds into it because I mean, in the bubble, everyone was there and everyone was like, no one, no one really left. There was one instance where uh, a Houston Rocket player brought someone in. Uh, but other than that, everything was pretty, as far as we know, everything went pretty worked well. Well, right? into that system. It, it worked beautifully. And they were actually a pretty, uh, they were a pillar for what to do. But I don't like, I think, and this is a testament to the NBA released a schedule, but it didn't go past, I don't think it went past February or like late January. Or maybe even early March. I forget exactly where the cutoff was because I remember hearing about yeah, it. I reading. think you're right. I think I think I remember hearing something along those lines from that. So yeah. So they don't. I mean, they're kind of playing it by ear to to see where everything is. I mean, technically, yeah, right day now, day by day, week by week. Yeah. That's how you have to operate. I mean, a lot of people are doing it just like that. That's what I do. You know, yeah, I, can't I mean, plan out a month from now. I don't know what that's going to look like. Yeah, you don't. And we so, there's no real. There's a schedule state by state and federally there's something kind of, there's something out there, but uh, and from everything I hear, it's just kind of like, they're scrambling to get stuff done. And, and, and I, you know, it's a huge undertaking. Let's not be unrealistic about it. So, I mean, you're going to have your birthing pangs anyways. So, I mean, right. You know, that's what it's all about, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens with the NBA. Uh, I have enjoyed the Celtics play very much. I know we talked about it last show, but Does uh, yeah. This break impact them yeah i mean i think it'll impact them like any team that couldn't practice i mean and i actually don't know if uh, how how many of them have been allowed to practice i imagine the ones that have been held back uh from team activity probably couldn't do yeah, much yeah too much i mean I don't, maybe they have something like outside and maybe they have a, uh, their own like basketball hoop they have inside for those who can command the salary or they have like a place they can go uh, that's safe and they're like just you know they're maintaining their right, quarantine the right yeah um so i don't know uh but yeah I, I think it will it's a shame but i think they'll i think it'll level off and i think just like how this year has been going i think like we talked about lesson they'll find their way you know they'll find who they are and they already were like tatum and brown were uh, uh, becoming a great duo i've always believed in both of them brown especially i've always thought he was a special player I think Brown uh, yeah. has elevated his game more so than Tatum. I think what you see in Tatum is kind of what you get. I think we're seeing a whole kind of different package of what Jalen Brown can be counted on on a day-by-day, game-by-game basis instead of, oh, maybe a little bit here. And maybe he'll explode on this one and then go back to being average. And then I think we're seeing much more consistency out of him now. Yeah, and he's, he's become he's- – doing a lot of stuff i mean his defense was always there so he's a two-way player he's a legit two-way player yes, he is now. who will uh, who rival like Kawhi leonard and people and and a player of that ilk so i mean it's exciting to watch these two so they're the cornerstone the final thing i wanted to ask you phil and this goes with tom too about your thoughts on the james harden trade over to the brooklyn nets tom shaking his head i laughed i don't know what you do well, I mean, I, I thought it was ridiculous, but you know what? We've been there before and we've done that to the league before. So, I mean, it's crazy. We'll see what happens. We were what talking about Kyrie. Around, comes around. Yeah, of course. And we were, I mean, you know, we might not like this thing, but you know what? We were the first team to really do that super, uh, to start that super uh, team, like the three uh, three big pieces. But we'll see. We'll see how hard it goes. Off air, Tom yeah. and I referenced the Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett trade. Um, who else was in that move? It was, Ray um, Allen. Yeah. It was Ray, Ray Allen. Yeah. Was it Ray Allen? It was Ray Allen. Yep. Ray no, Allen? He, no. I, no. Ray Ray Allen and Kevin. He's Garnett. talking about having the oh, big. Oh, to Bill's Brooklyn. I'm sorry. Brooklyn. Three. I'm sorry. No, no, you're, no, you're right. You're right. I, I apologize. You're right. Uh, yeah. No. It was, uh, it was Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and I think Jason Terry. And, yes, it was. It was Jason. Yeah. Terry. I apologize. Yep. I thought you were talking. Thank you, Tom. I thought you yeah. were talking about the so, big, big three. I think it's going to come back and do the same thing to the Nets. I think they're going to crash and burn with James Harden. I, I Possibly. Just, James I just Harden looks it's, like, I told Tom, he looks like he swallowed an elephant. I just think it's too, I just think they have too many players that want to have the ball themselves and want want to want to win the game themselves. 
Like, I, I get that they're trying to have, like, a big three, but, you know, like, you know, the Celtics had Allen, Pierce, and Garnett, and but they were able to they, – they share the love. They spread the love, you know. they, they But also there were three different players, you know what I mean? Right. But, I mean, basketball Like, very was, different. I mean, you know, like in uh, like in the 90s and the 80s, basketball was very different. And then when they were then when they were on the Celtics, basketball was different from that. Now basketball is a lot different now where you got one player on the team that wants to carry the team on their shoulders and you got three of those guys on one team now. There's no such thing as a big three, really. I mean, you can and say, I will say big... this. I will say this, too. I wanted nothing to do with James Harden as a Celtic. I wanted nothing to do. Well, you know what they were offering, or they wanted. Jay, they wanted Jalen uh, Jalen Brown, Jalen Brown, uh, Smart, and uh, possibly another player in a bevy of picks. Yep. Because Not I believe. Him. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and to Tom's point, like it's a different NBA, of course. It's like that's over ten years ago. But also, like back to my point about like there's three different players. Like uh, Paul Pierce, uh, you know, Ray Allen and Paul Pierce could drive to the basket too, and uh, KG could post, but. Uh, you know, Paul was like the leader because he had, he that was his team. That was the Celtics team, and Ray Allen was an assassin, and he could shoot from anywhere. Uh, with with Brooklyn, you know, KD can do everything. Kyrie Irving is a great ball handler and can drive to the hoop, and Harden's a a good shooter too. But I, I don't know if I call him an assassin, and he could drive to the basket too, um, and he can go to line. But I don't see them being. But whose team is it? Is it KD's? Is it Kyrie? I they mean, don't even know. Yeah, well, I think I don't think James Harden will, will. I don't think he'll vie for that role, but I think like. I mean, you, know, you don't between, know. You, you never. Know. No, I guess I guess you don't know, but I imagine like he's going there. They're already I feel in like there. You have three of the most bipolar players all trying to play together. It's not going to work. It's just. I, a I mean, hard I. Bet. I like KD a lot better than Kyrie. I or, do too. I will say Harden, that. but yeah, I, mean, I, I think you're right on with it. It's not even that either. It's the fact that you got you had three other teams involved or two other teams involved. Oh yeah. Um, outside Houston of Houston, and Brooklyn, and you had yeah. Brooklyn giving up oh, what yeah. eight players, right. seven players. Yeah, yeah they gave up a lot, and uh, like eight, they gave up like eight first round picks or something. They gave a crazy amount, uh, and I forget how long Harden's contract is for, how long they have him. But you know what? I mean, if they're all in for this year, we'll see where it goes. It could be crazy. It could be like. Well, if they could gel like much. nobody. I well, I mean, expect, e- expect something, and I don't mean that good or bad. I just mean like expect something like crazy to happen. Listen, if what? they couldn't do, if the Brooklyn couldn't do anything with KD and Kyrie, then how do they expect to do something with Harden added to that equation? Well, it's, all, it's only been ten, but it's also only been ten, ga- like ten games. They're outrageous. But um, but Phil, it's not just ten games. It's been three seasons. You're desperate and outrageous. Well, no, no, no. It's it's all. This is the first season where they're playing like KD and Kyrie playing together. I mean, KD didn't play at all last year, and Kyrie was there a year. Uh, yeah, just la- last year was his first year without KD, and yeah, they. Um, I think they made it to the playoffs, but Kyrie was injured most of the year. Injured, but yeah. Uh, and I'm sure – no, but you know what? Maybe he was, maybe he was, but I think he was definitely playing on that and waiting for this year. But, yeah, who knows? I, th- well, this is like the first year where they're going to make a run. So, I mean, I don't – you know, last year really wasn't – I don't count that as like the beginning of the KD, Kyrie, but I understand. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting. And the East is stacked regardless if Harden is on that team. The East is stacked. And I think the Celtics, you know, they're maybe two pl- – they're – a handful of players away uh, from being at the top of that heat. And I don't mean like a, a James Harden type. I mean, just like a bunch of role players that can help out. Uh, so, I mean, you, have, you have Brown and Tatum. You just need one All more, one more need guy it. added to that equation. No, you need, you need a couple more. You need to see where they are and then add a couple of people and then just add one or two for your bench. So you need, it'll get, even with, uh, the big three originally they you added quite Eddie a bit. House. You need James Posey. Eddie House, James you Posey. Yep, PJ Marcel Brown. Castell, all that. Kind yeah, of yeah stuff exactly. 2018. Had. Tony oh. Allen. You Tony know, it's, Allen. Yeah. You need a defensive special. I mean, you got Marcus Smart. He's a defensive specialty too. And but you know what? You need a lot. But the, the, the thing about the NBA that always gets me, it's like, well, no, you can have these talented players that you know uh, at top ending your team we also need you need a team and i think a lot a lot of people overlook it but yep. yeah but yep. i think i think you're right tom i think it'll be crazy i mean i think it's going to be nuts i think it's going to be we'll see how this goes 
The last thing I wanted to just mention briefly, I know that um, our sh we're almost cutting into, I believe, the half hour point on our show, but the NFL has the playoffs and everything going on. There's no Patriots. It's kind of weird not seeing the Patriots in the playoffs. I've never really experienced that before in my life, really. Um, <laughs> but I will say that from what I saw from the past weekend, was there really any sort of surprises? We had Buffalo win, so I expected that. We had Tampa win. I expected that. Um, the Ravens, I expected to win. Uh, um, like the Rams, maybe. I thought the Seattle would have given them a better game. But... Seattle was the one, I will say, yeah. that I thought they were, they were going to do a little bit better. So the Rams advancing, um, that, was, that wasn't in my radar. I didn't think that that would happen from that. I was, I was, Did you see anything that the Browns was, winning big against the Steelers? That was outrageous. That was beautiful. Um, well, it was beautiful. You, you know, I'm just, Steelers. I'm just, I'm just going to point out that the, that the Steelers always find a way to choke in the playoffs, no matter who they play. <laughs> they could play the worst yeah. team or the best team, and they're we always. We can the dial worst this back playoffs. because I know I said that that Pittsburgh was going to lose. I know I said that last week. <laughs> Let's look at the tape. Rewind. Well, I <laughs> um, um, I, I was, I was pretty surprised by. Uh, how well the Rams played against Seattle. I know they have like one of the better de defenses in the league, but they did not have the best all around team. Um, so I was kind of surprised by that. Um, but I mean, they did shut down DK Metcalf. So that kind of, that kind of worked in their favor. Um, and I know he was getting frustrated the whole game. Um, I was not expecting that Tampa Bay game to be so close. And that game was very boring, very vanilla, just didn't – I don't know. I wasn't sucked in from it really at all. Well, that fourth um, quarter wasn't bad, though. I mean, there was legit, like, drama in that fourth quarter, though. Like, uh, Heine, uh, Henke? Or Heineke? Heineke. 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 He was pretty great, and that's another guy we lost out on. So this um, upcoming uh, – we did yeah. – this upcoming weekend, I, obviously the big game is Tampa and the Saints. You know, you have Brady and Breeze facing off against each other. Tom, I'm, I'm thinking that you probably think the Saints are going to get this, right? Uh, I mean, regular season statistics uh, go in the favor of the Saints. That's for sure. Postseason doesn't. Yeah, I mean, but I, they they absolutely dominated Tampa in the regular season. I know they don't play well in the, in the regular – in the postseason. Um, but I mean, who knows? Who knows? I'm going to go out here on a limb. And as much as I, I, I want Tampa to win, I don't think they're going to win. I didn't, wasn't impressed this last weekend. Something's missing from that team. And it's not Tom. It's not the offense. I think it has something to do with the defense more than anything in the coaching. I think that their execution, their preparation is going to come and bite them in the ass. I do. I think that the Saints – will prevail and i think you could see a saints and maybe it's the rams facing off possibly i think the Packers. i think the rams could i think the rams could make another return trip um another thing i want to add from this past weekend was um or wild card weekend was that i was kind of i was kind of surprised that the titans didn't pull out the win i know you weren't shocked I was, yep i um, like the titans personally i know you weren't shocked but i the way the Ravens were playing, Tennessee Tennessee should have won that game, really. They had a shot. They had a legit shot. I think they just yeah. were – I don't know. But well, the Ravens well, were no, – what, what happened was Tennessee was out playing them that whole time, and then Tannehill just made that one bad throw, and it was game over. They think? Probably, I think? I think they would have won that game if he didn't throw that pick. Yeah, uh, I could see that. Possibly. I could see that being, being like that. Um, I know Vrabel is taking some criticism for some of the play calls. I know I've heard some things that were second guessing, you know, questionable decisions that were made. There. Yeah, it's fourth and one. Yeah. Well, that I think whole, that Derrick Henry game should have had much guessing. more of an impact in that game uh, than, he, than he did it. So that that's one of the reasons why I, you can be critical with the Titans because they have the tools, but they didn't. I don't think they use the tools effectively. Uh, what about Frank Reich with uh, Indianapolis? I mean, I actually was for going for it on fourth down, but they really had a well. Yeah, I don't know. There was like fourth and. It was a. <laughs> I I enjoy Andy. I like Frank Reich and I like um, hey, what Phil Rivers. I Tony mean, it was a, and all those. It was, but they were, but they had a really good team, and I think they gave the Bills. It was a crazy wild card weekend, really. Yeah, like, it was. There were a lot it was a good of, game. All the 
there weren't any games there weren't any games that there you know there were that were expected expected you know you like you go into you went into the weekend thinking okay the bills are absolutely going to dominate the Colts May, maybe they they won't you know play as well and it won't it will, but it was closer than you know most people thought um Tampa and Washington you thought Tampa was going to absolutely destroy Washington uh, you thought Baltimore was going to destroy Tennessee. I mean, there were a lot of teams them, that, you know, you thought were going to be dominated by one team, but they were a lot closer than they should have been. Yeah, actually. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, I just, no, go no ahead. I was just going to yeah. say, um, yeah, no, it, I think Indy had a great defense all year. They played really great. I think there were just a bunch, a couple of decisions where they, they kind of, they killed themselves. And I think, you know, Josh Allen is pretty great. He he had a great game, and they played pretty well against him. And he made some great throws uh, in this right at the end of the second quarter. That was a great drive for them too. So Buffalo but, plays. Uh, is it the Ravens? I believe that'll be a pretty. Oh yes, and the, the Browns, Browns play. No, and the Browns play can play Kansas City. And I also want to say, I the Bears uh, Saints game was very close going yes, into the third quarter. Close. And if the Bears ever get a quarterback or an offense, you mean you don't watch like out. Mitchell Trubisky? Actually, he wasn't. He wasn't horrible, but he wasn't uh, that, horrible, but he just does not. He doesn't doesn't have the. I guess that that, that stuff, drive. I guess. That, wow, it's Mitchell Trubisky. He's going to get it done. He's not clutch, not no. at all. But he did have a that oh that pass in the end zone that was just that was dropped was right in the bread ball. basket. I mean, that's not Trubisky. Did you see that? Oh, I did. No, it wasn't. No, it was no. right in his hands. And that's actually, like, apparently, what? yeah, I know it's like a doggy door. I'm not a football player. No, but, yeah, well, yeah, sure. But that guy, I've apparently. Seen you throw the ball. I've seen you throw the yeah. ball. But that was, I guess that was a fill-in. Their, their usual deep threat was out for Chicago. And uh, that guy was uh, the replacement. And, yeah. yeah, there you go. You snooze, you lose. Huh. Well, anyways, we talked a lot today. I know, that applies here, but I get you talked about the NBA. We talked about the Celtics. Hopefully they get back to uh, full strength and full health. And we talked about our NFL playoffs and everything there. We have another big weekend upcoming for the NFL to determine who will be going to the championship uh, for the AFC and the NFC. And then we'll have the Super Bowl upcoming that first weekend of February. Anything else, gentlemen, before we wrap it up? Because Yeah, you want to talk about the Red Sox. My, like I said, my stomach is growling and I'm hungry and I can give a rat, you know what, about baseball right now. Not far as being We'll Barnes. save that because MLB offseason, they don't do crap. So nothing will probably happen this upcoming week. So we can talk about it and on our next show. Take it easy. Anything yeah. else, guys? No, I got enough. My dinner Go is calling Go Bruins. Me, so I am going to do that. Go Bruins opening night. And we will see you next time on episode 96. We're getting very close to 100, which we should happen uh, February. Might actually be uh, a couple days before my birthday. So maybe that will be the birthday present, 100 episodes. So we will see you next time on another fun uh, episode of Pace the Facts. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.